Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be trying to make a dash camera with a Raspberry Pi. So I'd be looking to Amazon. There's a lot of options you can buy for very cheap actually. For 40 bucks you can get a cheap dash cam. But for this video, let's try to use our skills in Python and also uh, Linux to try to build a dash cam ourselves, right? So we're gonna be using a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a smaller form factor than the Raspberry Pi 4 that we used before. And hopefully you can then 3D print some parts to actually put everything together and actually use it in a car, you know, or a bike or whatever you want to use it as a dash cam. In terms of hardware, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero, of course, a Raspberry Pi camera that uses the CSI interface. We're going to be using a 3D printed part just to mount everything and a USB stick. Here's what the final assembly look like. You can see here we use the 3D printed part as some sort of support for the RPI camera. And you can see that the ribbon cable is connected to the camera and the Raspberry Pi. I noticed here there was a problem with the cables because the USB stick wouldn't fit together with the charging cable. So I had to find a solution for that. And that was for me to find this adapter here that converts uh, this USB, a micro USB, uh, male to female. And then I could connect both the charging cable as well as the USB stick. After putting everything together, I just charge it with the normal power bank. And then you can see here the final assembly. We still need to build a case for this, but for this week's video, that should be enough. So let's look now into VS Code here and see how we set up everything. All right, before I show you how we did everything, I just wanna show you the, the result, right? How everything is working. And the first thing I wanna show you here is by running this df h command on the Raspberry Pi. And here, this shows you all of your file systems and how they're mounted on your Raspberry Pi. So for example, we have the SD card with the operating system and it was partitioned into a lot of different parts, right? And it shows you here those parts and where they're mounted on. So which folders you can access those partitions. And the same thing happens for a USB stick. So for our dash cam, we're gonna be saving all of our files to a USB stick that we can later then put it into a computer and try to retrieve all those videos. But here we have a USB stick that's connected to the Raspberry Pi. It's listed here as this slash dev slash sdb1 device and it was mounted onto this folder over here so this is a folder that if we go to on the raspberry pi then we see all of our videos saved over there right and so i can show you here this command ls minus l a h that's going to just list all of the files in your specific folder in a more human readable format so let's go to that media uh rpi b uh, it's under videos and here you see information about all of the, the the files that are on that folder so you see here a bunch of mp4 files and they uh, are being recorded you know uh, in real time if you look here into this last one you see it's 100, 176 megabytes if i run that command once again you see it grew to 194 megabytes that's because it's being recorded all the time right so before uh, we show you the hardware itself and how everything works, let's look here into VS Code and see how we program that to be a dash cam, right? So the first thing you need to do is to install this library here called libcameraapps. You can do that with sudo apt install libcameraapps. That is needed because we're using actually the CSI interface of the Raspberry Pi, which is the camera serial interface. Before, we've used USB cameras. They're very convenient, they're very easy to use. But because this Raspberry Pi camera is a bit smaller, it's much uh, easier to use for a dash cam if you have a constrained space, I just decided to use this RPI camera. And the difference then is that it won't show up under your normal uh, uh, CD slash dev folder, right, as a USB device. Usually, if you put a USB camera here, you can see it easily as one of the video devices. But with this ribbon connector, you know, it won't show up like that. You need special drivers for that. And so that's why we need to install this Lib Camera Apps library over here. Now, the advantage is that we, can, we then have higher bandwidth because we're using a special interface that's directly connected to the uh, Raspberry Pi's GPU. And the downside is that we then need this special library and it's not as easy to use like a USB camera. And for that reason, then we're gonna be using Python again but Python is just gonna be used as a scripting language to actually run uh, Linux sub processes. So we can use this lib camera uh, application as a command line application here. We can just type lib camera to take videos and uh, take photos, for example. And we're gonna be using Python then to do the same, to run these 
uh, Linux commands to actually take pictures for us or to take videos for us, right? So let me describe you here quickly, you know, how this Python script works and how we can use it to create this dash cam. So first of all here, we're just gonna have one function and I try to make this as concise as possible to uh, make it easier to understand. But we're gonna have one while loop here that's always running forever. And we're gonna be calling this function over here. We're gonna be passing the path of our USB drive right, the ones the, that we connected to Raspberry Pi, it was mounted to this location, and then a duration that we want for the videos. We specify here uh, five minutes, that's 300 seconds. Uh, here's in milliseconds, that's why there are so many zeros, but we can specify pretty much whichever duration you want. And then we're gonna be just uh, giving one second interval between the end of one video and the start of the next one, right? So let's now look into this function here and see how exactly, uh, how, how it works. So the first thing we do here is to actually try to see if that USB stick is connected or not. If it is not, so if it is not a directory in your Raspberry Pi, you just uh, give a, a error message, you sleep, sleep for five seconds and then you return, right? So it's gonna be keep trying um, every five seconds, gonna take a break and then keep trying until there's a USB stick connected. But assuming you have the USB stick there and everything is fine, then we can proceed here. Here we're just gonna get a timestamp and we're gonna then format to this specific uh, format here, which is year, month, day, and then hour, minute, second, right? That's just gonna be used to specify the, the file name that we wanna save it to. So here's how we specify, we have the output file. We're gonna be joining then the folder, the output folder that we want. That's our USB stick folder, followed by this video underscore the timestamp dot H264. So this is a video format that comes when you use this lib camera app. And it's fine. I mean, you can play this using VLC, some media players, but to make it more convenient, you know, if you wanna just uh, plug the stick into your laptop and just watch the video, maybe it's better if you convert this later to MP4, but I'll show you how we do that later, right? And here's where the, the magic happens. So we have here a command, it's a list of strings but we're gonna be using this uh, sub-process library here, which is a Python library that allows you to run sub-processes on Linux. So it allows you to run those command line interface, you know, uh, commands in Python. So we're just uh, creating this new sub-process with a specific uh, command that you want. In our case, we're gonna be running this command over here. It's called libcamera uh, minus vid. We're gonna specify here a duration, which was the 300 seconds we defined earlier. And here, uh, resolution, right? So we define here full HD, so 1920 by 1080 pixels. And finally here, the output file name that we define here with this timestamp. And this is equivalent, you know, if I just go to my uh, Raspberry Pi here terminal, I can just type, you no know, lib camera, uh, minus vid, blah, 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 all the, the, the other things, and then it should do the same thing. So we're just using Python really to run these Linux commands, right? So we're gonna uh, try to run that into this try accept block. And then if there's any error, we just return, wait five seconds and try again, right? So after this, then you should start recording your video for the 300 seconds. And once it succeeds, right, it's gonna go next here. And that's where we're gonna try to convert it to MP4. So we're gonna use the same thing using sub processes in Linux, but now we're gonna be using another uh, application which is called this FFmpeg. You can install this using sudo apt install FFmpeg and that's another video uh, manipulation library that you can use media uh, handling and we're simply gonna give an input file that's gonna be our uh, h264 format file we're gonna be converting it to a mp4 file over here. We try to do the same thing here in this try accept block and if the conversion was successful, we now have a MP4 and the old file, the H264. And just to save some space here, we try to delete the old one with, again, this uh, process command running the remove command. So just remove the old file, right? And once it does here, it just uh, returns. And then we are back here and we can keep uh, running this loop forever with this one second interval in between. So your dash cam then is gonna be recording your videos, right? Converting them to MP4 and every five minutes is gonna uh, repeat the whole process, creating five minute long video files. Now there's one thing here that we need to consider is that the USB stick has limited 
storage space, right? So it has 128 gigabytes, the one that I'm using. And eventually we're gonna run out of space. If we just keep writing and writing and writing to the USB stick, eventually we're gonna need to delete some older files. And for that, I'm using this bash script here. It looks very cryptic at first. These bash scripts are very uh, difficult to understand sometimes, but it's really simple what I'm doing over here. It's just a script that's gonna delete your oldest files so that you have at most, you know, uh, in this case, 300 files. So I specify the folder where all my videos are. Again, that's the USB stick path, right? The folder. And here I define how many files I want. In this case, it's arbitrary as long as it's less than what you can actually store, uh, it's fine. But here I set 300 five minute videos, right? So that's gonna define now how long back you're storing your videos. And we're gonna run then the script to remove everything all the files that exceed then this 300 uh, number, right? So let's quickly look, look over here how it works, but we're pretty much here uh, getting a list of all the files in that folder sorted by time, right? So we run this command here in bash just to get the list of files over there and sort them by the modification time. Next, we're gonna see how many of those files exceed the amount of files that we selected. So we wanted 300. So we're gonna see, uh, given the length, you know, of the of the that folder, how many files are there? Uh, is it greater than the 300 that we define? So is the number of files in that folder greater than uh, 300? If it is, then we need to calculate how many files we need to remove. That's simply done by subtracting how many files are in that folder by the max that you set, and then removing that amount of files. And that's done here in this for loop. So uh, for how many uh, how many files we are that are above 300, we're gonna then be removing them with the remove command here. Right? So that's pretty much what it does. And if you run this, it's gonna then be deleting a few files. But the question is, how can we run this periodically? Right? Because if you just run this once, uh, that's not enough. And so for that, we're gonna be using a cron job. Uh, I've done videos before as well on how cron tab and cron jobs work, but pretty much you can type cron tab minus E. It's going to open up a editor here for you. And then you can define, you know, uh, a certain command that you want to run and how often you want to run that. So in this case, we're running this bash script. So bash and then the file uh, rotate video dot sh and this star 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 star. That's the cron tab syntax that lets you define how often you want to do something, right? So in this case, uh, this is default to every one minute. You can research how, how exactly the syntax works, but this is just saying every one minute, run this bash script and then uh, clean up that folder. So there's only at most 300 files. That's all that this is doing. You can save this and then it should already be working. Okay, and now the last thing that I want to show you is that this Python script that we created, right? It works if you run this, you know, you got to go to your terminal and run Python 3 and whatever your script is. And then if you keep this open, it's going to be running. But to make things easier, you know, it's better if we run that as a system D service. And I've done also videos on how you can set up system D services in your Raspberry Pi. But pretty much we're going to be then setting that as a service. So whenever we turn on the Pi, we plug into power, this script's going to be running automatically. It's going to start up and record just like a dash cam should, right? So as long as there's power to your dash cam, it's always recording. So you don't have to worry about like starting the, the recording process. And that's done here with the service file. I've also done videos that I'm gonna leave the link here in the description if you wanna learn how to set, set it up. But the important part here is defining then uh, what command you want to execute for the service. And here's gonna be Python 3 and then the path to our Python file, right? And a few yeah, settings here you can set up. So for example, restart. If something goes wrong, you try to restart always, uh, which user you wanted to run it as. Uh, yeah, and also important here is the name of the file itself. So recorder.service. So your service is gonna be named recorder, right? Just simply by the name of the, this file over here. Once this file is created, we just gotta copy it to a specific location on the Raspberry Pi. And that's done with this installation script here that I created but it's simply just copying that file to slash etc slash systemd slash system. Then we're gonna be running systemctl daemon reload to reload all the services. We're gonna be enabling the recorder and then starting finally, right? So that should then create everything that you need 
and then your dash cam now should be working already. So that's uh, pretty much you know what I had. Like this is recording already. One uh, one test that we can do is to actually get the USB stick from the Raspberry Pi and see if it's actually working, right? So let's do that now. All right, so I have the USB stick over here that I got from the Raspberry Pi. Again, this was recording always, right? So I just took it from the Raspberry Pi and let's see if it's working if we plug in into our laptop. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna plug it in. All right, and now you can see here, I'm on my laptop and you see all the videos here are listed into this USB stick. So now it's a dash cam that you can actually just like look at the videos if you want. They're all timestamped so you can see exactly what happened at what time. And you can just open one here. It's a regular MP4 file, right? And you can just play the, the video. Right now it's just like in my house here. So just looking at the ceiling. But the point is that you're always recording and you can actually see your videos later if you want. But that's pretty much what I have for today's video. We made this uh, dash cam using a Raspberry Pi, right? Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a smaller format. And for the next step, we can actually build a housing for that. So we can actually put it on a, in a car or on a bike, right? And try to use it as a dash cam for a real world application. So let's try to do that in the next video. But thanks for watching and I see you next time.